All right, let's look at 1711. Uh, the slender rod has mass m and the length l. It's released from rest at theta is equal to zero, so it's held up here and it swings down. And they are in. They want us to know or want us to find the components of force at the pin a when this is swung down to 90 degrees. Okay, um, for a thin slender rod being rotated from A, we know that the moment of inertia can be calculated by one third ml squared. If it was about the center, it would be one twelfth ml squared. It'd be easier to rotate. Um, okay, let's go ahead and say, let's sum the forces in the normal direction. Let's make a free body diagram. Um, the normal direction will have some force at A. We're also going to have some force in the tangential direction. Um, what else do we have from the mass center? We have mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And that's it. Um, we need to note that this, though, would be L over 2, not the full L. And this would be our angle theta. All right, so if I sum the forces in the normal direction, um, I get M omega squared RG. All right, remember that from the lectures on 17 for um, this is our acceleration all right so it's just Newton's second law rewritten we can say that we have a normal force at a minus mg sine theta that would be this component right there and that's equal to the m omega squared but we're looking at L over 2. Um, that's the R to G. All right, um, let's hold on to that. It's equation number one. Now let's sum the forces in the tangential direction. Uh, in this time, we'll get a new term for acceleration for the tangential component, and I'm going to write it as alpha r of g. So let's go ahead and call this positive right there. We have a possible force in the tangential direction at a plus a mg cosine theta is equal to m and alpha and we are going to put L over 2 in also for that one. Okay, um, let's call that equation number 2. What about the moments? Let's sum the moments, and let's do that about A. And that'll be equal to IA alpha. What kind of moments do I have about A? Um, well, I have only a component of the weight pulling down and that would be m g cosine theta and it's acting at a distance of l over 2 not the full length and then we go ahead and pull our i for a thin slender rod being rotated about its end that's one third m l squared and alpha so I'm going to solve this thing for alpha because we need to eliminate it in a second. Um, I'll get mg cosine theta of L over 2, or times L over 2, all divided by 1 third ml squared. Now, what we're going to want to do is use this equation. We can put alpha into here and eliminate. So 
I'm going to go ahead and integrate omega from 0 to omega. And I'm going to integrate from rest, which is 90 degrees up here, to, oh, sorry, 0 degrees up here, to the 90 degrees. And we get a 1.5 g over L cosine theta d theta when you simplify that. And when integrated, we get omega squared is equal to 3 g over L. Um, this is not a function of time. There's no time in here anywhere. So d omega dt or alpha is equal to zero. So now we can take our omega and our alpha, plug them back into one and two, and you get that the force at A in the tangential direction ends up being zero. And we only get a force pulling in the direction towards G. And that would be in the normal, and it comes out to 2.5, I think milligrams, something really small. Oh no, mass times gravity. I did this one without numbers. Alright, thank you.